الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله من بعد ان شاء الله ويل دو بيج 355 شابتر 24 سوره النور الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والابصار they fear a day when hearts and eyes will be overturned meaning the day of resurrection when people's hearts and eyes will be overturned because of the intensity of the fear and the terror of that day because every person's existence will come to a bridge on that day either a bridge to Jannah, we ask Allah to make us among them, or a bridge to hell fire. We seek refuge with Allah from that. And this is the one thing that most mankind are not believing in. They're belying, they're belying and denying that they're resurrection. So when they'll be resurrected for it, they say, Ya wailana qad kunna fi ghaflati min hadha. Woe to us, we were heedless about this day. So this is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْآزِفَةِ إِذِ الْقُلُوبُ لَدَ الْحَنَا جِرِكَ عَظِيمِينَ And warn them of the day that is drawn near, the day of resurrection, when the hearts are of fear, they are at the beginning of the throat. So the hearts go all the way up to the throats because of the fear. إِذِ الْقُلُوبُ لَدَ الْحَنَاجِرِ كَعْظِمِينَ مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ يُطَاعَ On that day the disbelievers will have no intercessor, no loved one that will come to their help. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَاصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْسَارِ But he gives these disbelievers respite, he gives them enough time until a day when the eyes will stare in horror. That's the day of judgment. Because these disbelievers, they denied this day, but when they will see it in front of them, their eyes will stare in horror because they know that whatever they were promised from Allah's punishment, they will get on that day. <coughs> also Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Isan, وَيَطَعِمُونَ الطَّعَانَ عَلَىٰ حُمِّهِ مِسْكِينَ إِنَّمَا نُطَعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُنِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْتَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَسُرُورًا وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا and these believers, they give food in spite of their love for it. They give it to the poor, to the orphan, to the captive. <coughs> saying, we only feed you, seeking Allah's face only. We wish for no reward from you, nor thanks from you. Verily, we fear from our Lord a day, the day of judgment that is hard and distressful. That will make the faces look horrible. So Allah saved them from the evil of that day, these believers that used to give charity even though they needed it most, and gave them a light of beauty and joy to their faces because they saw the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to please Him. So Allah, as a reward, beautifies their faces, and their recompense shall be paradise. Ask Allah to make us and our families among them, and silken garments because they were patient. And Allah says here, لِيَجْزِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنَ مَا مِنُوهُ يَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ So that Allah may reward them according to the best of their deeds. Meaning, there are those from whom we shall accept the best of their deeds and overlook their evil deeds. So basically, every deed has a weight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His generosity, He will take every single deed that these believers did, the best type of salah. So, you know, people pray different types of salah based on how much khushu they have, how much faith they have, 
so Allah will choose the best salah they, they prayed as far as weight is concerned, the heaviest salat in the scale, and will use that that weight for every other salat that they made, even though it may not, it was not as perfect as this one single salat, because this is from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's gonna take the best of their deeds and he's gonna make that as a gauge to reward uh, their similar deeds. So the best salat. And all the rest of the Salat are going to be given the same reward of that best Salat. The best day of fasting with no uh, trouble, with no fighting, uh, with uh, a lot of hardship. The greatest reward of that day of fasting is going to be the reward multiplied uh, by the number of days that this person fasted. <clears throat> and add even more for them out of his grace because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous meaning he will accept their good deeds and multiply them for them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says surely Allah works not even of the weight of a speck of a dust if you do any good deed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave it and uh, reward it whoever brings a good deed shall have ten times the like thereof to his credit so this is the minimum is tenfold up to seven hundred fold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and generous. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly spoke about spending and said, Who is he that we lend to Allah a good loan? <laughs> that means whatever money you're spending in charity. Consider a loan you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that loan will be multiplied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on day of judgment you will see the reward for that uh, loan for that cherry did as the mountains of Tuhama as the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rear your charity the same way one of you rears uh, his uh, small horse until he grows. So he feeds the horse and the horse keeps on growing until he's a stallion. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a charity of a believer and will rear it until it grows like the mountains of Tihama, as the Prophet ﷺ said. And Allah gives manifold increase to whom he wills. And Allah says here, Allah provides without measure to whom he wills. He subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation and he chooses to whom to multiply. A person cannot say, oh, why not me? Because it's not up to you to decide. Allah is the creator and sustainer. He is the decider of all the affairs. He did not do you injustice. Any good deed you did, he rewarded you for it. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the Lord. He chooses to multiply to whomever he wants. So a person can't say, uh, why why not us? I say this because the Christians and the Jews, they will say this about the Muslims, uh, because as the hadith says, the example of uh, the Jews and Christians is like the Jews, like a person that worked the morning of a, uh, uh, of a day and then uh, the master gave him the... Uh, give him paid him for the work that he did then the christians came and then they worked until uh doha time and uh, they were given uh, a payment for whatever work they did and then the muslims came and they worked a shorter time span and they got rewarded much more by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the jews and christians will say why so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them did i take away your right they said no so he says that's the bounty of allah he gives to whomever he wills it belongs to him he decides what he does with his bounty as long as he did not do you injustice it's not up to you to get involved in the affairs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to whom he multiplies etc etc Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوهُ أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيَاتِ أَحْسَبُوا ظَنْآنُ مَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَهُ لَمْ يَجِدْهُ شَيْئَهُ وَوَجَدَ اللَّهَ عِيَادَهُ فَوَفَّاهُ حِسَابَهُ وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابَهُ أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرِ اللُّجِّيِّ يغشاه موج من فوقه موج من فوقه سحاب ظلمات بعضها فوق بعض إذا أخرج يده لم يكد يراها ومن لم يجعل الله له نورا فما له من نور 
As for those who disbelieve, their deeds are like a mirage in a qi'ah. The thirsty one, a qi'ah is a flat plain. The thirsty one thinks this mirage to be water. So he undertakes the hardship to reach it. But when he comes up to this mirage, he finds it to be nothing. It was nothing but a mirage and water there. But instead he finds Allah with him who will pay him his due for worshiping other than Allah, for undertaking the hardship to reach a mirage. So this is the example. The mirage here is the reward that the disbelievers think they will obtain by worshiping others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they die, instead of getting the, the reward they wanted, they will uh, find Allah to punish them with hellfire for undertaking the hardship to worship partners, so-called partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is swift in taking account. Or like the darkness of a vast deep sea. As we know, human beings did not really reach the depth of the seas, but the deeper you go, the darker it becomes. Overwhelmed with waves, stopped by waves, topped by dark clouds, layers of darkness upon darkness. This is the example of the one who worships someone other than Allah. He is in darknesses. If a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. And he for whom Allah has not appointed light, for him there is no light. Two examples of two kinds of disbelievers. These are two examples which Allah sets forth of two kinds of disbelievers. The first one, the one that looks uh, at the mirage, is the first one. So here Ibn Kathir says, similarly, he says for two parables of the hypocrites at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. At the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah uh, gives an example of the hypocrite, uh, one involved in fire, and the other involved in water. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِي مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِي الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا So the example of the hypocrite is like a person uh, who uh, turned, turned on some light, who lit some, some fire. فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهَ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِ So, so for example, someone is in a dark place, he starts a fire, and finally he's able to see around him. But then Allah takes away his sight. So he's back to not seeing anything, even though what's around him is light. That's the example of hypocrite, because hypocrite believed and then disbelieved. So Allah gave two examples of the hypocrite being of Surah Al-Baqarah. One of them is, as we said, the fire. Uh, the other one is water. Similarly, in Surah Al-Ra'd, Chapter 13, Allah gives two parables, two examples of the guidance and knowledge that are instilled in the heart uh, of the, the believer, again, involved in fire and water. We have discussed each of them in the appropriate place, and there is no need to repeat it here. Praise be to Allah. The first of these two examples is that of the... So back here to Surah An-Nur, the first of the two examples is that of the disbelievers who call others to disbelief thinking that they have good actions and belief, thinking that they are calling people to something that benefits them, but instead they are calling them to a mirage. <clears throat> so their likeness is that of a mirage, which is seen in a desert plain, looking from a distance as if it is a deep sea. So far away, it looks like it's, it's water that the thirsty person is in need of. So, you know, he'll undertake the different types of worship in order for him to reach that, uh, water, but in reality, it's not water. It's only it's not water that benefits him. It's only a mirage that will cause him hardship in uh, reaching it, and yet he will not benefit from it. So that's the example of the person who worships other than Allah and spends money for the sake of other than Allah and fights for other than Allah, dies for other than Allah, sacrifices himself, his wealth and his family for other than Allah. This person is like a person who is undertaking all this hardship in order for him to reach a mirage that would not benefit him. The word qi'a refers to a vast flat level area of land in which the mirage may appear. There are different kinds of mirage, one which appears after midday and another which appears in the morning and looks like water uh, between the sky and the earth. If a person who is in need of water sees the mirage, he thinks that it is water, so he heads towards it in order to drink from it. But when he reaches this mirage, he finds it to be nothing. Similarly, this believer thinks that he's doing something good by worshiping other than 
others besides Allah and that he has achieved something. But when Allah judges him on the day of resurrection and brings him to account and examines his deeds, he will find that nothing has been accepted at all, uh, either because of a lack of sincere belief or because he did not follow the proper ways of the Sharia. Because these are the two conditions that have to be met, both of them, in order for any deed to be accepted, and ikhlas wal mutaba'a. The deed has to be done solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the second rule that must uh, that the deed must conform to is that it should be according to the Sharia that Muhammad came with. That's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said about the deeds that these disbelievers do. You know, the worships, the celebrations, the spending, the wars that they wage for the sake of their false gods. All these deeds, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala comes to them on the day of judgment, and He says, "And we shall turn to whatever deeds they did, and we shall make them deeds as scattered fallen particles of dust." So you see the particles of dust that are floating in the air. They can't even uh, stand still. That's what their deeds will be like. They will have no weight on the scale of deeds. And Allah says here in Surat, but this person who worships other than Allah is like one who is uh, heading to uh, to this mirage. When he gets to the mirage, he does not find it to be anything. Instead, he finds Allah with him, who will pay him his due for this believing and worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah swift in taking account. A similar view is also narrated from Abu ibn Ka'b, Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Qatada, and others. In the two Sahihs, it is reported that on the day of resurrection, it would be said to the Jews, what do you use to worship? They will say, we used to worship Uzair, the son of Allah. It will be said to them, you have lied. Allah has not begotten a son. What do you want? They will say, our Lord, we are thirsty. Give us some and a drink. It will be said to them uh, to look at the hellfire. It, it will be said to them, do you not see? Then hell will be, will be shown to them as if it is a mirage. So they will look at the hellfire and it will be made to look to them as if it is a mirage. Parts of it consuming other parts and they will go towards that mirage so that they can drink because they are thirsty and instead they will fall into the hellfire. This is the example of one whose ignorance is deep and advanced. So the one who who, who is calling others to worship other than Allah. That's the first, the, that's the first example. The, the person who is, uh, whose ignorance is deep and advanced. The other type of people who, who are just followers of the ignorant the, and their ignorance is simple. These are the followers those who are uneducated and foolish and blindly follow the leaders of this belief, no one understanding nothing, their example is the second example. So the first example was given to the leaders of this belief that call people to worship other than Allah. They are calling thirsty people to a mirage. The second example is the laymen that are idiots and foolish and follow these uh, callers to this belief without uh, discerning truth from falsehood, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given these qualities and they are uh, in, in their natural predisposition, in their fitrah. Allah says about these ignorant that follow the, the cause of this belief without thinking about uh, that. Allah says, Allah says, Or like the darkness in a vast deep sea, overwhelmed with waves, topped by other waves, topped by dark clouds, darkness upon darkness. If a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it, meaning he can hardly see the hand because it is so intensely dark around him. This is the example of the heart of the disbeliever whose ignorance is simple. He only follows the call of disbelief, and he does not know the true nature of the one whom he follows or where he's going. So that's why these disbelievers, if you just try to discuss with them what they're worshipping and why they are worshipping, they tell you, well, we don't know. We, you don't question the religion. You just do what you are told. No, Allah is trying to give you a brain to question everything that doesn't make sense, everything that leads to worshipping other than Allah. So this layman, this ignorant, he's like the ignorant man 
in the example who was asked, where are you going? He said, I'm going with them. So some people are going and just going with them. So, uh, so he was asked, and where are they going? He said, I don't know. Uh, they're just going and I'm following. This is the example of those that worship others besides Allah without discerning truthful falsehood. Darknesses, darkness upon darkness. Ubay ibn Ka'b said, he is enveloped in five types of darkness. The first darkness is his speech, is darkness. Basically, when he speaks, he does not speak the truth. He does not speak the light of the true knowledge. His deeds are darkness, where he worships and where he sacrifices for his false gods. His coming is in darkness and his going out is in darkness. And his destiny on a death resurrection will be darkness in the fire of hell. As Suddi and Al Rabi'a bin Anas also said something similar. And one whom Allah and he for whom Allah does not appoint light, for him there is no light. One whom Allah does not guide is ignorant and doomed. An utter loser and disbeliever. This is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, May yudlinillahu fala hadiyala. Whoever Allah sends astray, none can guide him. This is in contrast to what Allah says about the believers. Allah guides to his light whom he wills. We ask Allah the Almighty to put light in our hearts and give us light on our right and on our left and to increase us in light. Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu man fi samawati wal arb wa tayru safat kullu qad alima salatahu wa tasbiha Allahu alimun bima yaf'alun wa lillahi mulku samawati wal arb wa ila Allah al-masir See you not that Allah He it is who glorify whosoever is in the heavens and the earth and the birds with wings outspread, of each one he knows indeed his salah and his glorification, and Allah is all aware of what they do. And to Allah belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah is the return. Everything glorifies Allah, may he be exalted, and to him belongs the sovereignty. Allah tells us that whomsoever is in the heavens and on the earth, that means the angels and mankind, jinn, animals, and even inanimate objects all glorify him. This is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to سَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا فِيهِنْ The seven heavens and the earth and all that is therein glorify him. And the birds with wings outspread, meaning while they are flying, they glorify their Lord and worship him with the glorification with which they are inspired and to which they are guided. Allah knows what they are doing and how they are glorifying him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Of each one, he knows indeed his salah and his glorification. Meaning he has guided every creature. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has guided every creature to his own way. Of worshiping Allah, may he be glorified. Then Allah tells us that he knows all of that and nothing at all is hidden from him. He says, and Allah is all aware of what they do. Then Allah tells us that to him belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ruler and controller of everything that he subhanahu wa ta'ala created and all that exists. The God who is worshipped and besides whom none other is to be worshipped. And there is none to put back his judgment when Allah decrees something. It will come to pass. And to Allah is the return, meaning all their resurrection. When He will judge as He wills. On their resurrection, Allah will requite those who do evil with that which they have done. He is the Creator and Sovereign, and His is indeed the authority in this world and the next. To Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, be praised at the beginning and in the end. 
Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban thumma yu'allifu baynah. Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban thumma yu'allifu baynah. Thumma yaj'aluhu rukama. Fatara al-wadaqa yakhruju min khilalih. وينزل من السماء من جبال فيها من برد فيصيب به فيصيب به من يشاء ويصرفه عما يشاء يكاد سنا برقه يذهب بالأبصار يقلب الله الليل والنهار إن في ذلك لعبرة لأن الأبصار <clears throat> See you not that Allah drives the clouds gently, then joins them together, then makes them into a heap of layers, and you see the rain come forth from these clouds from between them, and He subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down from the skies, from mountains in it, of ice, and strikes therewith whom He wills, and averts it from whom He wills. The vivid flash of its clouds, lightning, nearly blinds the sight. Allah causes the night and the day to succeed each other truly. And this is indeed a lesson for those who have insight. The power of Allah to create the clouds and that which comes from them. Allah tells us that He subhanahu wa ta'ala drives the clouds from the beginning when they are formed and are still weak. This is the gentle driving. Use G. So gentle driver, you know, in the beginning, there are so small pieces of clouds. Then joins them together. Meaning he brings them together after they have been scattered. Then makes them into a heap of layers, meaning he piles them up on top of one another. And you see the wadq, the rain, comes forth between these clouds meaning from the gaps between these clouds. This is how it was understood by Ibn Abbas and Tahak. Ubaid bin Umair al-Layth, said, Allah sends the scattering wind, uh, which stirs up that which is on the surface of the earth. Then he sends the generator wind, which forms the clouds. Then he sends the joiner wind, which brings these clouds together. Then he sends the fertilizer wind, which fertilizes or seeds the clouds. And this was recorded by Ibn Abi Hatim ibn Jarir. So he's explaining how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the rain to fall from the joining of the clouds. And he sends down from the sky, from mountains in it of ice. Some of the grammarians said that the first min, min as sama, describes the place from which it is coming. So the rain is coming from the sky. The second specifies from which part of the sky it comes. And it's from mountains of clouds. Because if you drive, if you are you're in a plane above the clouds, you see them looking like mountains, subhanAllah, especially when you see them from the top. From the bottom, they look like they are one single layer. They are flat, but from above them, they look like mountains. This is based on the view of those scholars of Tafsir who says that this ayah min jibalim fiha min barada from the mountains in it of ice means that there are mountains of hail in the sky from which Allah sends down ice. As for those who say mountains here is used as a metaphor for clouds, they think that the second min is also used to describe the place from which the ice is coming and is thus interchangeable with the first. And Allah knows best. <coughs> And strikes there with whom he wills and averts it from whom he wills. It may be that the phrase and strikes there with meaning with what he sends down from the sky of different kinds of rain and hail. So then the phrase and strikes there with whom he wills, meaning by his mercy towards them, he, he lets the rain. Uh, touches those that he wants to have, he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have mercy on, and averts the rain from whom he wills, he withholds the rain from others as a punishment or because they're not paying zakat or other reasons. Or it may be that strikes there with meaning the hail as a punishment towards whoever he wills, 
striking their fruits with the hail and destroying their crops and trees after many months of hard work as a punishment for some deeds or as a trial. And he averts the hail from striking the crops from whomever he wills as a mercy towards them. The vivid flash of the lightning nearly blinds the sight. The brightness of the lightning almost takes away their sight if the eyes follow it and try to look at it. Allah causes the night and the day to succeed each other. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is controlling them so that he takes something from the length of one, that means the day for example, and adds it to the length of, of the night, which is short, until they become equal. Uh, this is uh, This happens... In uh, this happens on the 25th of December, and then he does the opposite so that the one which is short becomes long, and vice versa. So uh, there are two two times in the year, 25th December and 25th of June, where the day and night are equal. Allah is the one who is controlling that by His command, power, might, and knowledge. And truly, in this indeed is a lesson for those who have insight means this is an indication of his greatness of Hana wa ta'ala in fi dhalika la ibratan li ulil adasar and this is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in fi khalq samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layl wal nahar li ayat li ulil albab verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of night and day there are indeed signs for men for men of understanding. This is it for today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all trials and tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the best day of our existence that they don't need him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back the Muslims to the true past, especially the women and the youth among them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hasan in this dunya, hasan in the hereafter, and save God from the hellfire. And finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us from Muhammad in the highest paradise of Firdaus. Alhamdulillah.